Right, so. I think I'm going to start with Priest Mage against Palo Warrior since it's probably going to be the most common matchup that you're going to face. And I'm just going to talk about the the strategy and the sort of the goes that you can do and roughly when you should do them. Uh, because there's a few different things you can do, right? There's this multiple ways to win. You can you can kill the warrior, you can kill the pala, and you can oom the pala, right? So these are the different options you have. I believe this game we we kill the pala, but overall the idea is to try to start a go with the sheep on the pala. And sometimes you can shortcut it and just fear pala like we did here. And we actually just got warrior trinket straight away to deny next go. But usually we'll start with sheep on the pala. So here the warrior a uh, pala AoE sacks and the warrior blaze storms. I just PS it. And we're trying to avoid hitting the warrior so that the AoE sack doesn't break the sheep. And now we've got a root on the warrior. We survived with the PS to trade out for the blaze storm and we're getting sheeps on the pala. And the warrior doesn't know which sheeps on him. So he has to reflect at some point. So we basically farm the reflect in this way and we're just kind of waiting. And then when he's ready to sheep the warrior, I fear the pala. And he sheeps the warrior and we get a deep freeze off the fear. Try not to leave a gap in this forces trinket. Uh, they're quite loose with their trinkets. These guys are playing quite aggressively. But there will be other teams that will try and really hold their trinket. And you can either force, if the pala gets in a good spot and you use the water, element, water elemental, you can force the trinket with just raw damage. Uh, otherwise, if he's in a rough spot and you're just going to do a smaller go, then you can just do burns to get that lasting effect. So we've got the sheep on pala here. I uh, don't think he manages to get the resheep, but that's okay. Warrior gets freedom. And I think I'm just going to trinket and fear him here, and he's just going to sheep the warrior off. So that's okay. And right now, the paladin only has bubble left, so we're going to look to force that here. And he gets feared out into the open, so we get the deep freeze. And Riv's going to follow that deep with a CS, so the paladin knows this. He's just going to bubble early to avoid any extra damage. And now I'm just backing off, and basically we have a win condition now because they both have no trinkets, and the bubble is not up. So we just need to do the same go again. And we're going to look to start that off with the sheep on the pala, which is what Riv's doing now. Gets the sheep on the pala, so that says to me, okay, I can cross the map. And unfortunately, his pet nova gets resisted by the warrior due to the sacred cleansing. And he gets a, a blade storm off, but that's okay. He's going to reshoot the pala, and we're just waiting it out, right? If the warrior blade storms, we don't want to fear the paladin just yet because he can't shoot the warrior. Riv gets to reflect, and we get the fear on the pala, which is time to go. Spawn the fiend, and we're just pumping him out of the deep freeze here. And able to take him down just about. Big things are not to leave gaps between the fear and the deep and the deep and the CS because this will allow him to get a holy shock off and your go might not force a trinket. A couple of side notes. There is options to go warrior as well. And you can do this if the if you have the deep freeze and the paladin gets a full sheep, you can start going on the warrior immediately if he's if they if they start in the open field then it's then it's quite good. If if they're on the pillar then the warrior goes not as good because he's going to line a lot of your damage and you might not force as many CEs. Lost conditions is usually going to be stuff like they they have trinkets available and blade storm and they just send like a, a blade storm and if you don't have PS they send like a blade storm into a freedom into a uh, just dispels, trinkets, whatever. Overall, you just want to be a little bit careful of this, a little bit mindful. You don't want to go too crazy on them when they still have trinkets available. Play play safe. Try and play on the pillars as much as possible if they don't force you open field. And it's going to make your life a lot easier. Sometimes you can greed the PS on the first blade storm. That can be handy. You can use mind controls as well. If, if you are forced to just try and sheep the warrior while the paladin is free, like sheeping the warrior while the paladin is free is generally not great. You usually want to try and do it when the Paladin's in a fear, but sometimes you'll have to panic, do it, and cover with Deep Freeze and CS on the Paladin so that the Warrior doesn't get out. But you can also cast Mind Controls into this. If the Warrior has some other debuffs, the Paladin might not get lucky and get the Sheep. Uh, or the Warrior's in Nova, something like this. And you can use that MC to buy you time if you're in the open field to get to that next fear, which is the important thing. So let me see what we're going to do in this one. So we're starting with shields on both, manning it up, and these guys aren't playing in the room. Some people will play in the room. If, again, if that happens, you have the option to go warrior, but obviously you need to be very careful as well because uh, it can cause problems. So he's popped the freedom on the warrior early, and Riv should be getting the sheep on the pala now. And I think this looks like a go, go warrior game. He's gone quite open field, so it gets the deep. Warrior with the reflect. I eat it with a penance because only one tick gets reflected, and we actually just get the wall instantly. Which is fine. And you can actually go through wall pretty handily as, as Priest Mage. Um, and, you know, continue to force stuff. So because we kept going into the wall, we forced the bubble. And uh, we've got a couple of resists. Trinket the Hodge. 
And I'm going to drop the MC on the warrior here. Forces the trinket. So this is just a bonus trinket for nothing, right? He got the freedom, so he just wants to commit with it. And out comes the Bladestorm. Now, because we're quite ahead already, I decide to PS the Bladestorm here. So as to not fall behind, because I want to make sure our next go is good. Uh, so I'm pushing on the Paladin for a fear here. And Riv's most likely going to look for the sheep first. He gets the sheep. And the Warriors used Reflect already. Uh, and I believe we're going to look for a Warrior go here. Warrior's Sacred Cleansing is falling off as well. That's another another danger sign. If the Warrior has Sacred Cleansing up, he's going to take a lot less damage. And I accidentally leave a gap there, so he gets a Holy Shock. That's a misplay by, by me for sure. I need to be careful of things like that. It's an extra like 30% HP for the Warrior at least. Penancing the Reflect off. And Paladin comes out of the CC, pops the Hodge. And I'm going to kite a little bit here. Warrior doesn't have any charges for now. We get the freedom. Gets removed. Warrior likely going to charge me now. Again, we get the reflect. And Riv gets the full sheep on the Paladin here. It's nice. And Warrior's in trouble here. Paladin has to trinket. Warrior using block for the fiend. But doesn't have fear for it. And we actually managed to get a fear on the Paladin here. And Warrior in a full deep. Going to add some damage. A little bit late on my part. So there's another mistake. Got the reflect on my holy fire. Otherwise, I think he would have just died straight away. But Riv able to get another sheep on the Paladin into a CS and down he goes. So this is an example of a, a game where we've gone Warrior and managed to successfully kill him. And it really does depend on getting that pressure. If you if, if you feel like the Warrior is causing a lot of pressure on the Priest uh, and building momentum, this is where you want to not greed too much and swap off and start playing safely. Um, and maybe, you know, cut your losses, say, okay, we got Trinket, uh, maybe two Trinkets. But now it's time to start going Paladin again and try and finish it out like the first game. So they, again, the Paladin using Aura Mastery here and putting AoE Sack on the Warrior, but we're not touching the Warrior. I think I'm going to just PS this one. Again, because of the, the AoE Sack, uh, we don't want to Nova the Warrior, so the PS is is uh, just keeping us safe, right? He's playing quite close to the Paladin and managing to get the Fear. Warrior trinkets into a full Sheep. Not quite sure what he trinketed, actually. Let's quickly go back and see. Was it a Deep Freeze? Oh, it was a Nova, Nova and a Fear. Okay. So he gets full sheep. Paladin's still in the fear. That was a pretty rash trinket by the warrior. He was trying to finish me off there, but Riv equal to it. And so we've got the warrior trinket already. The blade storms out of the way. AoE sacks out of the way. So we're in a relatively safe position. Warrior reflects the MC. That's okay. And Riv gets a nice little nova out of line there into the sheep on the pala. And now Riv's going to be looking to swap that sheep over onto the warrior. And you can see the DR on the warrior is ending soon. So most likely he's going to do one more sheep on the pala. We actually get the Hodge from this. I believe he's going to do a third, and then we're going to swap it over. And I'm I'm trying to fear when Riv's cast is about halfway. So if you if you look here, I see that he's cast the third sheep. Now this is the last one, the Warrior. And if you can fear the Warrior just before you know the the Warrior can reflect or whatever, he has to zerk and and you know go for the reflect after. And there's too much things to do. He didn't have time to do it. So we got the CS on the pallet here to deny any dispels because the deep. Did it get trinketed? No, it was just a full deep into CS. So Paladin greeding a little bit here because he does still have bubbles. So we're trying to punish with, with damage so that, you know, we did a whole go and didn't get trinket or bubble. This is a bit awkward. Um, but we actually did get a lot of his mana. So that's not bad. He's down to 35%. And this might be a, a mana burn game right here. We'll have to see. Warrior gets rooted on his wreck that's fine and paladin again into the resheep because we're trying to build time to get the warrior sheep dr gone right and i'm just gonna fear now warrior is gonna get sheeped gets feared on it and now I, I believe i'm gonna look for some burns here but we'll see there's the deep not quite in position but yeah here come the burns and we instantly force a bubble with it because the paladin knows he's low on mana and the plea is not safe for him he actually pleased now riv's gonna push for it i'm just gonna count a drink okay Definitely an option to get the plea there as well. But I know my mana is a little bit low. But I do have fiends. So maybe going for the plea and, and uh, playing more aggro there was, was the play. Since Warrior Trinket is still on cooldown. We want to look to do a go here. I believe I'm just going to... So I actually fear a little bit early here. I think we could have reshoot the Paladin once. Um, because the fear kind of got wasted now. But uh, Riv going for the sheep into deep. And now they'll go. the setup isn't as good, right? So I'm just going to burn. Because we're not going to force anything with damage. Yeah, we sacks as well. And we, we actually do a panic short sheep on the warrior here because we're in a little bit of trouble here. Warrior's starting to build momentum. And so that's why I just throw in that MC to buy us some time. Riv gets the full sheep on the pala and goes for the Evo. And 
and we're just trying to sl sly in some more burns do the sheep swap with the fear and axe is going to come the deep now i'm not i'm making sure not to break the fear with the the burn uh but pallor actually trinkets that deep takes one burn so that's okay getting some value out of the go all the same and now again we have win condition and they both have trinkets down so we just want to do that one last go which means starting on pallor with one sheep which is there Trying to survive the warrior, trying to bring him line a little bit just to mitigate damage some. I know that there's a little bit of sheep DR on him, so I'm just trying to get some penances off. Doing a little lap, getting the re sheep on the pallor, and then going for the fear, getting the sheep off it. And I'm actually doing damage on this go now because I have the fiend up and pallor has nothing, so we just close that out. Even though paladin's low on mana. Because Rip has the pet and I have the Fiend, we're able to do enough damage to close out the game. Even though we, earlier we forced the, the cooldowns with the burn. Uh, if he doesn't use the, the trinkets of the bubble to avoid the burns, then he very you know he very well may go oom. So that's kind of the mindset behind it. You need to decide what is better in the moment based on positioning, based on what cooldowns the mage can use, how much damage he's got, etc. So usually the mage can call this what kind of a go it is because he knows how much damage he's got. Yeah, do, do keep an eye out for your mana as well. Sometimes you will need to get drinks, so be careful. Uh, you can usually get this off when you do like a fear go. Uh, with the sheep on the warrior, you can just run away afterwards to go, go and drink. And then the mage should be able to slow them down and control them for a little bit by himself. Uh, try an early shield as well. When You know, even when the warrior is not on you, if you pre-shield before you're about to go in his line of sight or try and do a go, then you'll basically have two shields because the weakened soul will be off by the time it's actually getting broken. Uh, this is going to be a huge survivability boost for you. Don't just go r running around with no shield and then shield when you feel like you need it. Having that pre-shield is a, a big deal. Don't get too keen with the warrior goes. It can be good to get CDs, but if you go too ham, the warrior is just going to run you over. So try not to get to the point where they can sort of all in you down, you know, that, that critical HP. Keep an eye on, on Bladestorm CD. That's where they're going to be going most offensive. If they don't have the Bladestorm, it's going to be really hard for them to get a kill. A mage can stack with the priest as well on the Bladestorm to bounce the pom. That's handy. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Other, other than that, try and MC in between. But if you can line, obviously the line is going to usually be superior to going for the MC. But it depends if your mage needs an MC to do stuff or to, to line or to avoid damage, then that's valuable as well so it's it's very much decision making matchup i mean just generally how to survive is like as i said pre-shielding shielding on cd this is going to be your biggest survivability thing try not to cast too many penances in the warrior's face usually you just want a one tick i would say if the warrior's on you because he has kick and he has ua for you and more often than not he'll have a ua available so you need to be really careful of that Try to waddle out of line and get as many ticks as you can off before the warrior comes into your line. He's going to be slowed by the mage. If he's getting good pressure on you, you can palm as well um, and renew and these kind of things. Generally, you don't want to be in the situation where you have to like try and fake the warrior and flash shield and stuff like that. Like your, your main goal should be to get away, get peels, cross CC, these kind of things, rather than actually just tanking him with you know heals, that, that sort of stuff because you're going to have a bad time. If you know he doesn't have a UA available, you can also try and cast MC on him. But this can be a bit of a bait as well, depending on what's happening, because he can he can reflect it uh, rather than using the kick, and you're just going to take a load of damage and just be behind. So again, it's decision-making. Best opener is Nova on the Warrior, CS on the Pala. The Mage runs in first, and then you run in afterwards when it's safe. And then you, your option there is, if it's open field, you can go on the Warrior with Sheep on the Pala, or you can go for... The sheep on the warrior and do instantly a, a, a most likely either a damage or a burn go depending on what the, the mage wants to use his cds early or not if mage uses cds early and pala's open field a damage go can be good and you'll you'll almost always force the trinket there if the the pala pre aoe sacks a go you just burn you're not going to force anything else but yeah that's that's uh that's it i think i think we will call it a wrap if you're watching on youtube thank you for watching if you're watching on twitch and for some alien isolation. Let me know what, what matchup you want, to, want me to do next. I need to write a little script for it of just general comments and notes, but I've got a bunch of uh, a bunch more videos that I can can watch and talk about.